Hey guys, today we are going to solve some rational equations. A rational equation is one with a ratio in it, or a fraction. In order to do that, um, we could find a common denominator and combine our fractions that way, but I think the method we're going to use is a little bit easier, especially as some of these get more tricky. Uh, so a hint for finding a least common denominator. What we're going to do is multiply both sides by the least common denominator, which really means multiply by the factors of all the denominators. In number one, the denominators are m, one, one, and one. So I'm going to multiply everything by m, not by 1, because multiplying by 1 doesn't do anything. So we'll multiply that first term by m, and the m's cancel, so I get 15. Here, nothing cancels, so it's minus m times m, or m squared. Nothing cancels here, so plus 8 times m. And nothing cancels here, so equals 10 times m. Now it's a quadratic equation that I'm left with. I've got a squared, a first term, and a constant. When I have a squared and a first term, I just want to collect everything to one side, set equal to zero. And in this case, I'm going to move everything to the right side because right now, my lead coefficient is negative. If I move it over here, my lead coefficient will be positive. So zero equals positive m squared. 10m minus 8m is 2m and negative 15. Now I can choose to factor, complete the square, or use the quadratic formula. To me, the easiest looks like it's going to be factor. So we're going to multiply two numbers to make negative 15, and those same two numbers are going to have to add up to 2. Okay, so two numbers that do that are 5 and negative 3, so 0 equals m plus 5 times m minus 3, and from there I can get my two solutions. The value of m that makes this factor a 0 is negative 5. The value of m that makes this second factor a 0 is 3. So those are my two solutions. Now before I lock them in, we need to discuss the domain. Anytime I've got a variable in a denominator, I have to find out what value for that variable would make a 0 denominator. And in this case, I cannot plug in a 0 for m. And I didn't get a 0 for m, so that's okay. These are fine. Now, if I ended up with m equals 0 as a solution, say it was 0 and 3, I would have to throw out that 0 because I can't have a solution that violates the domain. That did not happen here, though, so negative 5 and 3 are both valid solutions. In number 2, the factors of the denominator are b and b minus 3. Okay, and b cannot equal 0 because that would give me a 0 denominator here, or 3 because that would give me 0 denominators on the left and right side. So when I distribute here, the b minus 3 cancels, so it's 4 times b. Here the b cancels, so it's 3 times b minus 3. And here the b minus 3 cancels, so it's negative 2b times b. So I'm going to distribute that 3, and I really could have distributed it and written a distributed version right here. In future problems we'll do that. I just wanted you to see where everything's coming from. So we get 3b minus 9 and negative 2b squared. In this case, I'm going to bring everything left, so I have a positive lead coefficient. 2b squared plus 7b minus 9 equals 0. And I have the same three choices, factor, complete the square, or quadratic formula. I'm going to factor again because I don't think we get enough practice factoring with a lead coefficient other than 0. And I can't divide all of these by 2 evenly, so I'm stuck with that coefficient, that lead coefficient of 2. So I need two numbers that multiply to negative 18. Where does that come from? A times C is negative 18. 
Over here in problem one, it was the same. A times C is negative 15. The A was 1 times negative 15 is negative 15. Then I'm going to add up to B, which is 7. And two numbers that multiply to negative 18 and add up to 7 are 9 and negative 2. So we're going to use the box method. That's my favorite way of factoring when I've got a lead coefficient other than 1. So my first term goes in the first box, 2b squared. Last term goes in the last box, negative 9. That 7b is going to get split up into these two boxes as 9b and negative 2b. The order of these two does not matter. First term goes in last box, last term goes first term goes in first box, last term goes in last box. The middle two don't really matter which order. Okay? So out of here, I can't factor anything out of this bottom row. So that means the only thing I can take out is a 1. But since that 1 is next to a negative box, it has to be a negative 1. Out of the top row, I can factor out a B. First column, I can factor out a 2B. And the second column, I can factor out a 9. So my factored form is 2B plus 9 times b minus 1 equals 0. Okay, so to, to evaluate what value of b would give me a 0 in this factor, I'll have to set that equal to 0. 2b plus 9 equals 0. So move that 9 over. 2b equals negative 9. So b equals negative 9 over 2. For this factor, it's a little bit easier. If I put a 1 here, I get a 0. So b equals 1. And I'm just going to write both of my solutions together and negative 9 halves. And neither of those violate the domain where b cannot be 0 or 3. In number 3, the factors of the denominators are 2a plus 1 and 2a minus 1. Here, the 2a plus 1 cancels, so it's 3a times 2a minus 1. And let's just go ahead and distribute that now. 3a times 2a is 6a squared. Three a times negative one is negative three a. Okay, then we're going to distribute a negative four. The two a minus one cancels, so we're going to distribute negative four on two a plus one. So that's negative four times two a is negative eight a, and negative four times one is negative four. Okay, so we've distributed here and here. Now here, nothing cancels. I'm going to write this one out. 1 times 2a minus or plus 1 times 2a minus 1. Okay, so that 1 times all this, the 1 doesn't mean anything. So when I distribute, I get 4a squared. Then minus 2a plus 2a, those cancel, and that's what happens when you multiply conjugates. Same things with a different sign. And then 1 times negative 1 is minus 1. Let's move everything to the left, and we'll keep a positive lead coefficient. So that's 2a squared minus 11a minus 3 equals 0. Let's use the quadratic formula this time. Uh, a equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. All over 2 times a. And the discriminants under here has a value of 145, so that's negative 11 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 3 is 145. 2 times 2 is 4. Square root of 145 is the same as the square root of 5 times 29, and both of those are prime, so I'm not going to be able to simplify this radical 
So those are going to be my solutions, one with a plus, one with a minus. Now let's double check the domain. If I set each denominator equal to 0, 2a plus 1, that cannot equal 0. Move the 1 over and divide, I get that a cannot equal negative 1 half. The other denominator, 2a minus 1, cannot equal 0. Move the negative 1 over and divide by 2, I get positive 1 half. So a cannot be plus or minus 1 half, and that's not what I got, so I can keep the solutions that I got. Number four, you could multiply by a few different ways. You could do 2n times 3n times n, or you could do 6n. To me, the easiest is the simplest, the smallest number of numbers and variables that would eliminate everything. That's 2 times 3 times n. Here, the 2 and the n cancel, so I'm just multiplying by 3, 1 times 3. Here, the 3 and the n cancel, so I'm just multiplying by 2. So 2 times 6n minus 9 is 12n minus 18. And here, the n cancels, so that's 2 times 2 times 3, which is 12. Okay, now I have an n, but no n squared, so I'm just going to move that 3 and negative 18 over. 12n equals 12 plus 18 minus 3, and that is 27. So n is 27 over 12, which simplifies to 9 fourths. So what can n not equal? If I put a 0 here, here, or here, I get a 0 denominator. So n cannot be 0. It's not. So we can keep our solution. 5 and 6 have something a little bit different from what we've seen so far, and that's the fact that there is a denominator that can be factored. In this denominator here, I can factor out an x. x times x plus 7. And this denominator here is a difference of squares, which can be factored to p plus 1 times p minus 1. Another way to think of that is p squared plus 0p minus 1. What multiplies to negative 1 and adds to 0? 1 and negative 1. So in number 5, I'm multiplying everything by x and x plus 7. So when I distribute here, nothing cancels. So I'm just going to multiply x times x plus 7 times 1. That's x squared plus 7x. Here, the whole denominator cancels with all of this, so I just have minus 5. And here, x plus 7 cancels, so I have 3x. So I'm going to move that 3x to the left, x squared plus 4x minus 5. This looks like an easy factor. Multiply to negative 5 and add to 4 x plus 5 times x minus 1. So my solutions are x equals negative 5 and positive 1. Now what values of x would make zero denominators? x cannot be 0 or negative 7, and they're not. So these solutions are OK. In this case, I'm going to multiply everything by p plus 1 and p minus 1. So when I distribute here, p plus 1 cancels. So I'm multiplying by p minus 1. So that's 2p squared minus 2p. When I distribute here, p minus 1 cancels, so I'm multiplying by p plus 1, 3p plus 3. And here, both terms, or both factors cancel, so 15 minus p does not get multiplied by anything. So we're going to move everything to the left. 
2p squared, negative 2p plus 3p is 1p, plus another p is 2p, and 15, 3 minus 15 is negative 12 equals 0. I think this one will be pretty easy to factor as well. Everything can be divided by 2. p squared plus p minus 6 equals 0. Multiply to negative 6 and add to 1. The numbers that do that are 3 and negative 2. So the solutions are negative 3 and positive 2. And what can p not equal? If I put in a negative 1 or a 1, I'll get 0 denominators. So p cannot equal plus or minus 1. That's not what I got, so I get to keep both of my solutions again.